uh, we are trying to not fully analyze it for this white paper, but at least define in that white paper what the issues are that we want to look at in a better way. Okay. And so now, uh, Andrea working? is starting. Okay. So um, Can Andrea, you hear me? Yeah, okay. we'll explain to you what, what our plans are. Okay, yes. So enough about science. <laughs> now, let's see how we can put everything together in a white paper. So uh, this is uh, essentially a list of how the paper should be uh, put it together. So first of all, the question that we had is, do we need a white paper? And the answer also after this week, it should be yes, easily yes, because LGWA is a new mission concept. So we need to outcloud the mission and our, all our concepts. So we need to explain what is the relation with other gravitational wave detection. We need to provide simulation and analysis tools to do the science that we want to do. We need to do a lot of stuff to, do, to identify priority tasks that we need to accomplish. And we should summarize also other science in the desi hertz uh, uh, regime for uh, more broadly, not only related to uh, LGWA. So we do need a white paper. We, we have uh, some uh, uh, past example of how a white paper related to gravitational wave or uh, lunar science could, uh, uh, could be written, but there are something that we need that, that are present in other papers, something that we don't. For example, if we take a look to the LIGO Science One paper, so the, the, the structure of the paper, you can see it here. They have an executive summary with the whole the kind of a, a, a trigger that can be observed. There was no figure in the LIGO, the LIGO Science One paper because this was done uh, after the uh, initial um, acquisition of data of LIGO, but they, do, they don't need the figure, but we do. We definitely do uh, need the uh, figures. It was structured into task, and we do need uh, that also together with the prioritization. They do have table of uh, full-time equivalent uh, commitment that we do need this kind of stuff at, at, the, at the moment, so we should leave this away for the moment. Another example are the uh, science paper that, uh, that were put uh, out um, uh, by ESA uh, from the, the space, uh, uh, space uh, analysis of uh, planetary science, several, several white papers covering different topics of planetary science, biology, human resource and radiation. And the structure, as you see, is uh, roughly the same. So we have an introduction with, uh, with a summary that show also what are the key planetary science uh, uh, topics here, for example, for, for the moon, you can read it, but there are different uh, topics. Uh, it is written in a prose form uh, to describe the science topic, including some figures. That, that, that's the same thing that we should, we should do. And they, uh, they ended up with some uh, recommendation and prioritization of what should, should be done. So with that in mind, and also having in mind that uh, uh, first uh, uh, some sort of white paper was already uh, put it together by Jan when this concept was presented for the first time where uh, uh, we, we show the detector concept, uh, some uh, initial uh, sensitivity plot uh, and uh, uh, the science that we can do with, uh, with, uh, with uh, this, um, this instrument was already done. So building on that, we can start uh, to do our for, uh, white paper. And the first thing is uh, to divide, uh, um, uh, divide our, um, let's say, community in working group. Uh, each working group are related to a different uh, topic. So working group one is related to the multi-messenger astronomy and the gravitational wave science. Working group two is more related to the lunar science and exploration. Working group three is uh, only focused, mainly focused on payload. So this description of group, what, what are the tasks that, that they should uh, look at is, uh, is here. If you want to be part, if you're not, if you want to be part of uh, one of each, each working group, you can uh, contact us here or directly write, write into us, and you can be part of uh, uh, these different uh, working groups. So. Having all this that in mind, this is uh, uh, the basic uh, structure that we have in mind 
with the contents that should, we should put in our white paper. So having a, an executive summary, uh, describing the uh, LGWA detector concept, uh, going more in detail with geophysics and geology of the moon, uh, describing the science that we can do with the, uh, with the LGWA, uh, going more in detail in multi-messenger observation, focusing also in other science that we can uh, achieve, and uh, maybe uh, a, a final, let's say, uh, chapter that looks more in detail in, with the synergies with, the, with other missions. So here is, uh, uh, feel free to uh, stop me at any time. If you have something that you wanna, uh, wanna add to this list, this is the basic list that we had already in the, in the skeleton of this white paper. If you think that you they need something that we should add, we can do it live. We can, do, we can add here some, some more topic and we can uh, try to put it together in the white paper. So for the, for the uh, say the chapter two, uh, let's say, I'm skipping chapter one because it's gonna be a summary and exactly summary of, uh, of the mission we can be doing and, uh, at the end. For the chapter two, so the, 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 the chapter that focuses on the, the detector concept, we should describe the payload uh, of, uh, of the mission with uh, some important uh, uh, details on uh, noise contribution, background noise mitigation, and describing the sum check uh, uh, more in detail with, uh, for example, sensitivity update, sensitivity plot, uh, with uh, more um, uh, detailed analysis that we, uh, as already uh, Jan said it, uh, several times, can be done with the, the GW fish uh, matrix code. If you wanna try to do your own uh, uh, simulation, you can find the code here or with uh, all the documentation that is needed. And we do, uh, in the end, need to do uh, the best uh, sensitivity plot to put it in the white paper using this, uh, this code, essentially. This, uh, the, the next chapter, so the one that is focused on geophysics and geology on the moon. So we thought that uh, uh, we need to, uh, to tackle this, uh, this, uh, all these kind of uh, uh, arguments. So the surface composition of the, the moon, ge geological process, the lunar internal structure, the seismic background that is uh, essentially what, what we need the most and uh, maniac defense, super charges. So I'm not a, an expert on that. So if you think that we should tackle more in detail one of those uh, topic or even adding some more, let us, let us know. Uh, then we move on on the science that we can do with the LGWA. So uh, this is a, a plot that also Jan show the most updated, I think, plot for the uh, horizon, uh, in the detection rate and the horizon of LWA compared to AT and, uh, and LISA. And uh, for the science, we can focus on the uh, gravitational wave astrophysics, cosmology, fundamental physics on, on many forms. Uh, and maybe we can also think of also other uh, science case that we can talk about. Next, uh, uh, the multi-messenger, next up to the multi-messenger observation. So here we, we heard a lot of uh, uh, talk also during this conference about the science that we can do, a multi-messenger observation that we can do, so related to uh, binary neutron star or binary white dwarf, uh, tidal disruption event, we just had a, a nice talk, uh, black hole binar binaries, the supernova, and, and so on. Uh, then we can think of uh, uh, any other science that we can do related to uh, lunar gravitational wave antenna. So, uh, studies of uh, impact of meteorites, uh, general property of the moon, interaction of the moon with the exotic particles, who know uh, lunar south pole that are possi possible deposit of uh, moon water, and, uh, and who knows some, something else. Then in the end, uh, we have to, uh, I think that we should uh, put in a, a final, say, a, more, almost a final chapter about the synergy with, the, with other lunar mission or future instrumentation or mission like Einstein Telescope, or Cosmic Explorer, LIGO, LIGO India, or LIGO, LIGO Virgo General, LISA, and so on. So this is, uh, in the end, the structure that we already uh, that just outlined you. If you want, uh, 
there is already an overleaf uh, uh, with all uh, um, this uh, uh, structure already already made. If you want, you you can feel free to add your name to each section that you want. You are interested to contribute uh, or to contact us, and we can uh, we can put it in uh, one uh, uh, working group uh, to work together on the writing on this paper. One, one thing that is important, what is the timeline for this paper? Well, the sooner is the better, because the, the, the first aim is to be to have a first completed draft by the end of September 2023. Or if you prefer, uh, that's the correspond to have, okay, to have it, to have it done by uh, the meeting that we will have in October in, uh, in Catania. So that's the, uh, the, the old story. Now we have to work and uh, make it happen and write it uh, together. So feel free to open the final white paper discussion. If you think that there is something missing, uh, something that should be added, please let us know. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, no. <laughs> I think it, it may be very useful if you could think of adding uh, something like, I mean, uh, neutron star white web binary where neutron star is close to is the POV limit. That's the maximum limit. Okay. Star mass and it has a very interesting uh, implication in uh, UCD physics, you know. Uh, there's all sorts of possible extra degrees of freedom and the UCD phase transition can happen as well. Do you want to take note of it? The densest possible form of matter that you can offer any other than anything more than that. So, uh, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Again, the different declination of the topic. The advantage here is all the low frequency part from the I mean, lower post neutron uh, terms, you can very accurately calculate from this low frequency, you know, whatever um, I mean, director you are uh, basically are talking. And when you do multi banding with in, in combination with Einstein and C, the high frequency perturbation, uh, only that much of information you can take from high, uh, high frequency part. And uh, that, that won't be so easily accessible for some Amazing science, I guess. Yes, yes, you can work, you can do it. You mean, okay, so you mean to have a, a, a summary of uh, the rate and the magnitude that you can expect from for uh, electromagnetic, uh, okay. Yes. Um, Paul, if you want, you can speak up. Yes, <clears throat> sorry. Um, it, I, I think it was on, on the first slide or second slide, I don't know, uh, when you were mentioning or uh, asking what all the things you could do. 
in the Desi Hertz range. What do you, what do you mean with that? One? Uh, maybe it's one before, probably. I don't know. Uh, no go. Mm. Uh, you, you were asking what else could we do in the Desi Hertz? Uh, and I did not understand the, the, uh, yes, we should summarize the Hertz gravitational of astronomy more broadly. What do you mean with that? Uh, I mean, um, the last point you mean, you mean? Yes, yes, sorry. Uh, I think not not only focus at if I if I understand correctly what, what we talk about not not only focus on LGWA but all the Deci Earth uh, astronomy that you can do. It yeah, the so we have to dedicate. I mean, that's not yet. Uh, I think very clear in the paper structure. But the, so the title the title of that white paper will be LGWA white paper. But, yes. But uh, there there must be at least one longish section or maybe even uh, some some kind of short chapter in the beginning or something, which. Uh, Talks about the whole decihertz, um, you know, framework, like all the, all the mission concepts that there are, uh, even for ground based. So we have to, I think we have to. Um, yes, not only focusing on, on uh, yeah. LGW. So, but, so why, so why bridging the gap is important? Well, I think um, it is. To have uh, it as a reference, probably. Yeah, I, th I, I think um, we keep, we, 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 we should keep this short, but I think it's. Um, um, Nonetheless, I think we, you know, this is meant to be a reference work. So, uh, because there's, of course, some connection also to other missions. So, I guess um, we just want to make sure that uh, that the people know what else is in this white paper. But uh, yeah, what what else is proposed for decibel detection? I mean, I, I, for our purposes directly, it is not so important. But uh, I think for the people who, at some point, you know, from outside, yeah, read that's the what, paper. that's what I understand. It, it should be for future reference. Rather, uh... yeah, for you, but I mean, it, it's okay. It's, I mean, I understand why you asked the question because for us, our, for us personally, I think there's no direct uh, reason to do that. But on the other hand, I think um, we, we want to connect uh, in some way to work that was being done because in these papers, you also find, uh, of course, uh, science cases uh, outlined to some extent. And so I think it's good to include. To include no, these was just, cases. was just curious. Thank you. Maybe, you know, just to say where we stand. So I think uh, um, what happened only maybe two weeks ago is uh, that people, the last people kind of from our own, you know, collaboration put their names there, which is not, not, not maybe not even fully done yet for, for some of the chapters. But um, now we are kind of getting, you know, we want to get organized now to write, to do actual uh, organization of the different chapters. Yeah. So we are going to, um, you know, determine, you know, um, have like one, two people organizing the different chapters. Uh, and then uh, that means like they're kind of coordinating meetings with, with that group that is under a chapter and then, um, and then start to yes. uh, organize. So, so if, you, course, if, you, you, if know, you want to participate, you have to go to the overleaf and put your name within uh, Yes. The chapter that you're interested in collaborating. My personal recommendation is that you should, uh, because that is uh, important for later on, just uh, if you want to contribute, write to us, because we also have to add you to the mailing list uh, to make sure that you sure. receive all the communication later on. And so then, uh, uh, as you know, we can now wait for another two weeks or so that, uh, that uh, this process is done. And then um, uh, we will send around emails in the working groups to. Uh, share another time the information how we want to organize that work um so we can now you know yeah. delay that for, for another two weeks, weeks or so and yeah. then um, and then we can um, share agree. information again with the mailing list okay with all the links and whatever we need then i agree okay so we wait for your emails Yes, and I, th I think you made this already clear, but you know, none of this is like final. So no, maybe, no. The, you know, so that, you know, the, the, uh, all of, you know, um, chap chapter sections can be added. This is all, you know, things that can be discussed. So 
uh, don't be, um, you know, if you think, uh, but what I'm interested in is not on that list yet, that doesn't mean that it won't be on the list. Oh, yeah. So, for example, you know, to make more, there's also an exotic thing. I mean, that was maybe for under other signs. So, for, for some decades, there were people proposing to use the moon as a particle detector. So, with like um, uh, subsolar mass black holes traversing the moon or uh, you know, exotic particles hitting the moon and, you know, producing events. So there are all kinds of other signs that people propose. Yeah. If, uh, if the collaboration decides that these are important to mention for some reason, then, uh, you know, of course, this can go into the white paper. Good. Okay. Uh, so there is calculation. Yeah. Good question. So the question was uh, if we should also um, uh, say something about pipelines. So I think what we don't have to do that uh, uh, um, in a very clear, you know specific way with, with a section or so. I think uh, we should, however, um, make clear what it takes. As you know, generally, what, you know how 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 you would go about uh, doing the analysis. For example. Um, if um, if there's some technical problem that is not already solved by LISA or LIGO or something, so if we, we somehow have to invent a new type of pipeline to actually search for these signals, then it would be relevant. On the other hand, if it is uh, more or less a small variation of already known data analysis problems, then I think we don't even have to mention it. So I think if there's something that is so new that we would have to really come there with a completely new pipeline then I think uh, it should be mentioned because then, uh, you know, people can refer to it when they want to, uh, you know, come in for a postdoc on this or something like that. The detector concepts, are we going to see, we are, we are asking for some set of seismometer, some, some set of instruments. But uh, are we also saying that if at least some some minimum like a minimum set of instrument that we need to go, if, if for example, if are we going to like say that we don't have they cannot support all all the things that we are asking, are we all, are also going to say like this is the minimum set that we would need, and we are also like projecting what we would be requiring in in the future if this mission is successful, and it works out. No, what 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 did uh, what was the end? I am uh, sorry. And, in the detector concept, is it also like, are we going to break down what is the minimum that would be required? Oh, so in terms of requirements. Yeah, so I think um, that would be very, um, uh, I, th I think, yes. So I guess we, we should try to make, put elements into, into the science, uh, uh, to the white paper as, as known from other space missions, like, you know, science metrics, this, like, uh, so that you get from your science requirements to your, so we should have a little bit of this analysis, like, okay, if uh, for some reason we cannot uh, achieve this high precision laser interferometric readout and it will be a factor of 10 uh, less sensitive, what is the impact on, uh, you know, the detection horizons, per, uh, sky localization, all of that, uh, thermal noise, if it's going to be higher than expected. So I think, uh, we, uh, I don't know if we have to go this typical space um, kind of scheme where you start with the science requirements and then you trickle this down to the technical requirements. Instead, we can... I think more or less maintain this terrestrial gravitational wave detector kind of scheme where you start with the instrument and then you make your variations, reasonable variations of things that can go wrong. And then you put in the white paper what the consequences would be on the science. Um, that's what I personally prefer, but I know that in space uh, missions, it's often the other way around that you start with uh, some science goals and then requirements and then technical requirements and so uh, it's a, d a different direction, but um, I think we can keep the, the old style for us, at least old style. Is there a plan to like stay, like make this proposal as like a different phases, not just like uh, one phase uh, deployment? Yes, uh, yes, I think the, exactly. So th these are these are uh, aspects like um, how would you do the deployment, or could you stage it, or uh, what about yet another sensor at the pole? So I think we can. Uh, uh, give a little bit of um, you know ideas how 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 that deployment might make uh, work or how this might be extended in the future. So 
So I think there should be a generic discussion at the beginning. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Direction, as what Shivraj said. Or perhaps if there are some precursor studies, like in the uh, the, the sound sound check, uh, if there are specific sensors which we could put in that as a technology demonstrator or as a sensor, for example, if dust is some other proposals, there's a dust issue. So if we if we had a dust sensor to answer the question, is there like a cloud of hanging dust all the time, or is does it settle down? Is it excited by some bombardment of tiny meteorites? This sort of question, I think, is quite critical to many of our instruments. So, semi sensor yeah. can be put on a precursor mission, it might help. Yeah, that's, uh, that's another good point. So, you know, uh, maybe what, uh, what was put in, uh, you know, under synergies in reality is a much wider kind of um, problem because it's not only about synergies, it's also about. Uh, what are all the lunar missions and, and, you know, those of all that are going to happen before and that are, what information will we get out of these missions and why are they relevant to LWA? And also, uh, of course, when we deploy anything uh, with LWA or with Soundcheck or so, it is not going to be just two seismic sensors. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, there, there, there must be a payload which has much more, you know, capabilities. Um, also for other scientists. So, you know, it's clear that it doesn't make any sense to just put the sensor and that's it. So then, you know, we will make full use, of course, of, of, uh, of whatever you can put there as payload. So I think, um, yeah, we can also ask ourselves, you know, what uh, geophysical um, studies could be done, you know, uh, which might also have relevance to us uh, or maybe to next step detectors beyond LWA and so on and so forth. Um, well, I guess some of, yeah, I think um, it's not so easy. I guess, I mean, of course, when it comes to geophysical variables relevant to LWA, I would say um, that you put in the geophysics chapter. But then if it's more about, you know, um, uh, air, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it's like uh, studies that could be done that are not really in the interest of LWA, but maybe other scientists are interested, but th these are like, you know, things that you could add to the payload or maybe or in view of a uh, detector after LWA and things like that, I think that should go into another section. Um, I don't know how yet to structure this in a good way. It other will be a bit science. messy, I think. Science, yeah, maybe other science. I, yeah, we have to think about this. I don't, I don't I, know. I, I meant, uh, suppose there, there, there is some critical parameter that is as yet unknown. For example, the uh, shear stress of the uh, regulator. Is there some critical parameter that affects this mission, which could be uh, benefit? The mission would benefit from some other precursor mission. Ah, not necessarily sound check. Not necessarily sound check. Ah, okay. Any anything that goes yes. to the moon, if we could ask for this information to be made available. Yeah, that that that, that, that definitely is uh, uh, very yeah. important to have, and that must go. Uh, yeah. I think in the well or in the detector concept. Yeah, so we have to see. I mean, uh, geophysics. Uh, yeah, I think depends what at the, the moment. I think we is, have yeah. we have we have this all in chapter three. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we you know this can be restructured because there are always two aspects. It's like what science can we do with soundcheck and with LWA, and what science or what do we need to understand before we actually have LWA from other missions even. So I think these are like two different things and they are not necessarily, they, they don't necessarily need to show up in the same chapter. So we could uh, we could maybe structure it differently in a way that there's something before and then, uh, uh, you know, science with. Or in this chapter with the sound check. Yeah, exactly. Sound check and other precursor missions or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it and then LWA science, you know, geophysics uh, and so on. Oh, that, that is that, that is still completely under under investigation so we we have no uh, um, we, we have not uh, chosen yet the thing is that um, in, in principle we want to do a very extensive study so 
where we essentially look over the entire polar regions, North Pole, South Pole in principle, uh, all of that. And uh, because there, 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 there is a best location for us because there are really so many different things that we uh, care about. So there's some crater out there which is probably better than all the others. And so, uh, but unfortunately because of solar illumination and temperature things which are very difficult to you know, search over systematically, uh, it is a bit difficult computationally, but we have to, we have to do that. So, uh, and, and that takes time. And so we, we, we know, you know, we just have some, you know, point estimates from, you know, but we, we need to do much more. We don't know yet where it might go. Uh, well, for example, we have not yet in, uh, considered at all geology. I mean, we have people who are starting to look into this, geologists, lunar geologists, uh, um, uh, concerning the choice of deployment site. Topography matters, geology matters. Uh, but in reality, um, of course, we have also only partial knowledge of geology because when you think about what we actually would like to know ideally, then we don't, we don't really know all of that. Um, but in any case, of course, some things are known about geology, and but we have not even yet included that in the in the discussion of site selection. Uh, at the moment, it was just temperature, stability, and stuff like that. But you are right. I mean, that argument also, of course, has to appear there because. Um, Oh, there's a message in the chat. You know. Regolith composition Regolith at poles. Composition could be at poles. Yes. Should be a subtopic. Yes. This can feed into estimation of other disturbance beyond seismic noise. Yes. I I agree. So, I mean, the, the one challenge will be because I think there are so many lunar missions going to happen in the next 10 years. And, you know, all of that is going to happen before LWA uh, that we really have to be careful that we understand all of that landscape because there might be something interesting uh, for us. Uh, because um, many of these studies are actually exactly tackling points that are relevant to us when it comes to geology and topography and all of that. Yes, Taichi. Uh, 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 yeah, I just want to follow up on the discussion because I think it's very important that to clarify what needs to be um, constrained before LGWA and you kind of have a simple even table that says that you have to know what we know right now and the, um, the level that we want to know to before we have LGWA because this will also work as a push to realize these kind of um, observations. So if I will, sorry about talking by my, for myself, but so if you want to know more say, about the seismic noise, if you write that, we can use this as an argument to push the more seismometer on the moon. And I think this is also the case for all the um, different observations. And since we have opportunities, I think um, it's always good to have not only like a lunar science community pushing for this, but also a larger community like a uh, astrophysics community also pushing for this, this will be a very strong support to realize such observations. So I think if you ha can have something written like that, I think this will be not only beneficial for the mission, but as a whole. True. This should be written like that, like you said. Yeah, yeah and e exactly. So. That, that document has to be also, or might serve as a reference, not only for us, but maybe also for other groups yes. that then can show, look, they are interested in these things. Uh, uh, so, you know. And since I have a mic, um, is some kind of like technical challenges or are the things that has to be here, like power situation? I think this is something we need to have before and um, do we need to write down these kind of things too? Yeah, I think we could make uh, some kind of maybe um, 
yeah, some table maybe um, that is summarizing maybe some of the key technical challenges that we still have to overcome here. Not only about the science payload, but maybe the whole kind of, you know, the full concept that we are thinking of. Do the like scientific motivation paper, or do we split it into two papers where we have like the mission and the payload kind of paper and then the science motivation separately? Yeah, so um, definitely some of the things that we discussed are quite technical, you know, prioritization and, you know, what, what uh, um, so mission preparation. So in, in some sense, uh, we just, in the end in the paper, what we want is just maybe the science we can do with LWA um, and that's it. So of course that is a subset of this whole white paper. So I think, uh, yeah, we have to, we have to maybe write in a clever way uh, and, and divide this already out in a clean way from the beginning that we have like really chapters that are only science with LWA uh, and then the rest goes into other chapters so that we can in the end just take it out and, you know, work. It depends also how long we want this paper to be. So, as short as possible is my, is my answer, as short as possible. <laughs> should be yes uh, it really should be for many reasons yeah that's why i asked this question because once you bring in the mission constraints and very <laughs> it, it really blows up yeah yes we have to uh yeah we have to we are okay we have to discuss these points Rating what science you can do, as you pointed out, you can say best case scenario, worst case scenario, kind of sensitivity yeah. curves and say, okay, with, if we get this, we can do this. If we get yeah. do that and leave it at that. Yes. So exactly those curves are attained and achieved would be in a separate topic. Yes. Okay. So you mean just to put a table summarizing something that is written somewhere else? Because if we try to, uh, you know, describe how we are going to achieve a certain performance, uh, it's going to blow up. easy. Yeah, I think the, the, the point here is that it must be in a defendable way. You cannot be too superficial because once you start to explain the, the motivation behind sensitivity curves, then you have to do it in a good way because otherwise there will be more and more questions. So that is maybe the real problem. So yeah, yeah. What, uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't, like, those curves should not be drawn without putting in sufficient. Yeah. We may do all the payload design and the mission design separately. Take the output of that and put it into this. Paper. Okay. So if anybody asks a question, we refer them to that. Um, uh, just wanted to um, make, I, I'm not sure if it's necessarily relevant, but it just came to my mind. I, I wanted to say it. I'm wondering if it might be worth doing a study about data analysis readiness. Uh, so it's not completely clear to me whether the tricks that we use for Lisa and the tricks that we use for LIGO will necessarily work for uh, um, LGWA. Maybe for some portion of the parameter spaces, it might work, but for others, uh, well, it's not immediately clear to me. Yeah, exactly. So we should definitely think about this. So if we, if we look at all the sources and we, you know, we have our discussions, if, if then something becomes clear that this is like really a new type of analysis that we need to, to detect and analyze them, uh, and that is not yet covered at all by Lisa and, uh, and ground-based, at that point, really, we should... Uh, 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 if there's enough of it, then we should put this in some kind of section or uh, so that, that we summarize, uh, you know, what needs to be done. Just following up on that, uh, at what time scales is the PSD expected to be non-stationary? The PSD? Oh, yeah. yeah uh, highly non-stationary. Uh, but yeah, I mean, highly, well, it depends on frequency. So let's say above 0 0.2 hertz, I would expect it's highly non-stationary. Below 0 0.2 hertz, uh, it will become more and more stationary because the background will matter more and more, uh, you know, the seismic background will matter more and more at higher frequencies than less and less. So uh, this is a frequency dependent statement, but yes, uh, for the decihertz band where we will for sure have to deal with the seismic background, um, and where you not only have the stationary background, but all these, what we today call glitches, you know, which are really driven by the seismic background on the moon. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a way to deal with that. Um, and 
this will be a very unique thing because there's no isolation from these glitches essentially. So you have right. to, uh, it's a much more, you know, difficult problem than in LIGO at the moment. Right, yeah, I mean, that, that to me seems to be the biggest data analysis challenge as well. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Exactly. So that would be a point to, you know, uh, to, to make in the paper and, and maybe give some ideas with what tools one could deal with that so that people can start to, you know, think about this. You want to conclude? Was the last talk? This one. It was the last. Um, <laughs> is, is it? That's it. Are we? Are we done?